So now let's try this example here, 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. This is another quadratic trinomial, which is most of the kind of things you have to factor in Algebra 1. I could use guess and check, or I could use logic or some other method. I'm going to use the grouping method. But before I do that, I want to talk about things that are going to be prime and how you can tell if they're going to be prime, meaning not factorable. Let's talk about how to check for factorability. So the first check for factorability is to check for x-intercepts. If there are no x-intercepts, then your polynomial is not factorable. Because whether or not something is factorable ties back to x-intercepts, roots, and zeros. And if it's not, if there aren't any roots, x-intercepts, or zeros, then you can't factor it over integers. Second thing, just because it does have x-intercepts doesn't mean it actually is factorable. Because if you have x-intercepts that are irrational, like the square root of 3 or something, then you're not going to be able to factor that in Algebra 1. So another way is to check the discriminant. And remember, that's the b squared minus 4ac. And if something is factorable, then b squared minus 4ac must be a perfect square. So if you want to check to see if a polynomial is factorable to begin with, the best bet is to check the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac, if it's a perfect square, then you can factor that thing over integers. Now, I'm not going to actually test this for factorability. I'm going to try to factor it. I need to break up the negative 7x by looking at factors of ac that add to b. And it's not just the c, remember, we have a 6x squared, so we're looking at the factors of ac that add up to b. In this case, it's going to be uh, a and c are 6 and negative 5, which gives me a negative 30. So I'm looking for factors of negative 30 that, when added together, give me negative 7. And the sign matters, always take the signs with these numbers. So factors of negative 30 that add to negative 7, that tells me that one's positive and one's negative. So I'm going to make this one the negative one and that one the positive one. And so I go through the factors. 1 and 30 are too far apart. 2 and 15 are too far apart. 3 and 10 are 7 apart. And so one of these numbers is 3 and one of these numbers is 10. And then since it's negative 7, that means this has to be negative 10, and this one has to be positive 3. And so that doesn't factor it for me. All that tells me is that 6x squared minus 7x minus 5, before someone combined like terms, it was 6x squared minus 10x plus 3x minus 5. And now I factor by grouping. And I can do this just in a line, or I can draw it in the boxes. I'm just going to do this in a line. So I think, OK, well, what are the factors in common to 6x squared and 10x? Well, they're both even, so there's a 2, and they both have x's. And I'm left with 3x minus 5. And oh, hey, check it. I have a 3x minus 5 over here. So that means, what did I have to factor out to get this to work? Well, in order to get this to work, I need a plus 1. So if my factor happens to be the actual expression or term, that means I had to factor out a 1. So this expression, before it was simplified, was 2x plus 1, and then 3x minus 5. And this is the factored form of the original polynomial. Now let's officially talk about factoring completely. On the last few class activities, I've actually had you do some factoring completely. And factoring completely means that first you check to see if there's a greatest common factor between your terms, and then you factor that thing out first. And then after you do any factoring that you notice you can do, you always look at your final factors. This is actually key right here. Even if you forget to find the GCF, if you take a couple of seconds to look at the factors you've created to make sure that they're factored, then you can factor completely. Now, here's the deal. The instructions from now on are just going to be factor completely. And I expect you to be able to factor out GCFs or whatever just from this factor completely instruction. 
So we're going to look at a couple of examples. We'll start with this one here. I have y squared times 2y plus 5 minus 9 times 2y plus 5. And I see that it's like halfway grouped for me. And of those two groups, the 2y plus 5 is common. And then I'm left with y squared minus 9. Now, if you box off and happy face this answer, you did not factor completely. Remember, you always check your factors to make sure you can't factor them further. So if I check 2y plus 5, I can't do anything with 2y plus 5. That's fine. Then I check y squared minus 9. I say, well, can I factor y squared minus 9? And when it's not linear, y squared minus 9 is not linear, then you should be a little suspicious that maybe you can factor it. If it is linear, then the worst thing you can find is the that you didn't take out a GCF. In this case, 2y and 5, you know, there's no greatest common factor other than 1. So this, if it were y squared plus 9, then I, I can't do anything to it. It's, it's completely factored because remember, sums of squares aren't factorable. But this is not a sum of squares. This is a difference of squares. And that was one of our special cases. I can factor it. And if you remember how to factor difference of squares, which I hope you do, um, I square root that, I put a plus and I put a minus, and I square root that. And now this completely factored. Because if I look at my expression, I can't do anything to 2y plus 5, can't do anything to y plus 3, can't do anything to y minus 3. So now if I look at this final example, it's cubic, but I notice that there's an x common to each one, so if I factor out the x, maybe I'll be left with something that I can factor further. So I have x, I'm left with a 16x squared plus 8x, and I notice in class that a lot of people will just close off the parentheses right then because it's like, oh, I took that x out. But a rule of thumb for GCF factoring is however many terms you are given in the original expression, when I factor out the GCF, the thing in the parentheses better have that many terms. So if I have three terms here, then when I take out the GCF, I have to have three terms inside the parentheses. So that means something has to go here, and the only thing that'll work in this case is a plus one. And always double check before you move on to make sure you did everything correctly. Make sure you have the correct number of terms in the parentheses, and that if you just do a quick visual mental multiplication to make sure that you actually factored out the correct thing, 16x squared times x, yes, 8x times x is 8x squared, x times 1 is x. So I factored out the GCF correctly, yay. So now the question is, is that factored? So I need to see if I can factor this. Now, I have a method to factor any quadratic trinomial. That's to multiply a times c, in this case it's 16, and then look for factors of 16 that add up to 8, and in this case, that is a 4 and a 4. Now, I see the 4 plus 4 and 8, and that makes me remember, oh, hey, wait a minute. This thing here actually happens to be one of my special cases, and it's the perfect square trinomial because I see 16x squared is a square, and so I get a 4x. Everything's positive. 1's a square, and I get 1, and I just have to square the whole thing. And if I didn't recognize this at this point, then I'd have to continue factor by grouping by saying 16x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 1, and then go through the whole, proce whole process and get the exact same answer. So it's good to check for special cases in the beginning, because factoring by grouping is actually the type of factoring that takes the longest.